welcome dear students to epg patshala i am dr k s nagaraja of deccan college pune teaching the course of historical linguistics today we look at the developments in the modern indo aryan languages in the previous two modules we have already looked at the developments of uh, old indo aryan and from old indo aryan into middle indo aryan today we will look at uh, the further developments from middle indo aryan into modern indo aryan now it's an interesting case to see that all along the linguistic developments we see there are linguistic works as well there is the literary works as well so whatever changes we posit can be easily identified in the literary texts available there is a great uh, boon for linguists particularly historical linguists so in new indo aryan it normally starts from 1000 ad to the present the similar trends can be observed in further simplifications take place linguistically speaking so in the in this particular course we look at some of the works which represent this particular stage and also the developments which culminate to the modern languages as we know them and the type of influences these languages had uh, which have uh, which have influence in their structuring so these things we take up step by step the trends observed in the middle indo aryan stage continue and get further simplified some of the modern indo aryan languages have literary traditions reaching back centuries with enough textual continuity to distinguish old middle and new or modern for instance bengali gujarati etc bengali can trace its literature back to date from charya padas late buddhist verses thought to date from the 10th century gujarati literature dates from the 12th century sali badras bharateshwara bahubali rasa and to a period when the area of western rajasthan and gujarat are believed to had a literary language in common called old western rajasthani ganeshwara's commentary on the bhagavad gita in old marathi dates from the 13th century and early maithili from the 14th century jyotishwara's varnaratnakara while assamese literary work dates from the 14th and 15th centuries madhava kundali kundali's translation of ramayana shankara deva's vaishnavite works can be quoted here also of the 14th century are the kashmiri poems of lalla lalla vakhyani and nepali works have also been assigned to this epoch the work of jagannath das in old wadia dates from the 15th century amir khusro used the term hindvi in the 11th century and he composed couplets that contained hindi in early times however other dialects were predominant in the midlands that is madhya desha as literary media especially braj bhasha for instance surdas sursagar 16th century and avadhi ramacharitamanas of tulsi das also of the same period in the south in golconda that is in andhra country urdu poetry was seriously cultivated in the 17th century and urdu poets later 
came north to Delhi and Lucknow. Punjabi was used in Sufi Islamic poetry of the 17th to 19th centuries. In addition, there is evidence in late Middle Indo-Aryan works for the use of early New Indo-Aryan, for example, provincial words and verses are cited. Here, a distribution of modern Indo-Aryan languages, the inventories of them uh, is provided. We know that there are uh, quite a few number of uh, languages. So we can start from Hindi, Bengali, Punjabi, Marathi, Gujarati, Konkani, Wadiya, Saraiki or Lahanda, Bhojpuri, Rajasthani, Sindhi, Nepali, Assamese, Sinhalese, Maithili, Bhili or Bilodi, Kashmiri, Tharu, Harauti, Dogri, Garhwali, Nimadi, Sadri, Kumauni, Dundari, Ahirani or Khandeshi, Maldavian, Romani or Gypsy. So these are some of the major languages of uh, Indo-Aryan or more appropriately modern Indo-Aryan and the chart gives the, the geographical locations where they are spoken and also the uh, population as of 2001. Literary languages tend to become somewhat removed from the usual standard colloquial, colloquial literary was literary or high Hindi, for example, tends to replace some of the Perso-Arabic vocabulary with Sanskritic items, whereas literary Urdu makes great use of Perso-Arabic words. We may look at the, the phonological developments first. As uh, we had noted in the Middle Indo-Aryan, that there's a great amount of simplification of uh, vowels, and uh, consonants, phonology. Vowels in sequence contracted in early New Indo-Aryan, as said earlier. For example, Old Indo-Aryan, a C T, a C T became Middle Indo-Aryan, a C, a C. But in Hindi and Punjabi, a C, whereas Bengali, a C, which means A T. Further. I and O sounds change to Y and O and O to O, O, o to U, while U developed into E. The diphthongs I and O were retained well into the New Indo-Aryan period and are still pronounced in some areas. For example, Brajabhasha, Karau, I, I do, Karai, he does. Middle Indo-Aryan retroflex the and the aspirated the developed into the flaps ra and dha dha. For example, Prakars, Sadiya, woman's garment, Kashmiri, Lahanda, Hindi, Punjabi, Bhojpuri, etc. We find Sadi, Miss Sari, and Prakart, Pad to read or recite, it becomes in Sindhi Padanu, Lahanda Padnu, Padan, Hindi Punjabi Padna, Gujarati Padu, Marathi Padanu, that means to study. Stress is not generally contrastive in New Indo Aryan, though. Different areas have different rules for placing major emphasis on a given syllable. For example, in Hindi, length is pertinent. So, gila, swallowed, has major stress on the last syllable, whereas gila, wet, has on the first syllable. In Gujarati, on the other hand, vowel length is not pertinent. The stress position depends on which vowels occur in contiguous syllables and on the structure of the syllables, whether open or close. 
For example, Juna wall, but Dukan shop. In Bengali, each syllable of a word receives about equal stress. Vowels. The Indo-Aryan vowel system is as varied as the number of languages in the family. Masika discusses the range from the basic five vowel system of Roma found in Europe, of course, Roma, Romani, for instance, and a six vowel system as found in Vadia, and a big number like 13 found in Simulis shows the shows short versus long contrast for six vowels like e e a a a a o o u u a a and in addition has a schwa interestingly many languages of the group instead of showing quantitative length that is length contrast show qualitative or height contrast so in hindi we have uh, uh, vowel distinction based on height. There are uh, eight vowels in Hindi. All are short vowels. The sounds that most clearly distinguish Indo-Aryan from the Indo-European are the voiced aspirate stops and the retroflexes. In the outlying new Indo-Aryan areas, however, the sound system has been reduced. Similarly, has no aspirated stops, Assamese has no retroflexes, and Kashmiri does not have voiced aspirates. The geographical position of these languages doubtless contributed to these losses. Sinhalese coexists with Tamil, Assamese is surrounded by Tibeto Burman languages, and Kashmiri is on the border of the Iranian area. The normative system of new Indo-Aryan stops consists of five points of articulation and shows four-way contrast, voiceless and voice and unaspirated versus aspirated contrast in stops, labial, dental, retroflex, palatal, and velar, which is same as that of Sanskrit. Palatal stops have a fricated release. Some languages like Marathi, Sindhi, Gujarati, besides having aspirated stop series, possesses aspirated nasals as well as well as Maha, Nha, etc. And a few languages like Rajasthani and some dialects of Hindi also have aspirated laterals, La versus Laha. New Indo-Aryan shows evidence of early dialect distribution. This is discernible by considering sound changes proper to each group. The Eastern group, that is Assamese, Bengali, Wadiya, has three important changes. Long versus short E and U merge, as we have already indicated in the subgrouping module. Assamese, Duli, Bengali, Dula, Wadiya, Duli, whereas Hindi, Dhul and Sanskrit also dhul. The vowel sound O of Middle Indo-Aryan was replaced by O in Bengali and Odia and A in Assamese in initial position and open syllables. For example, Bengali moron, Odia moron, Assamese moron, death, Sindhi marano, mortal or death, Sinhalese marana, Gujarati, Marathi, Maran, Sanskrit, Marana. Moreover, in this group, a vowel is affected by the quality of the vowel in a following syllable. For example, in Bengali, Amikori, I do, the verb root has O followed by E in the next syllable. But Tumikoro, you do, has an O sound similarly. Ami kini, I buy, but tumi keno. As a result of vowel assimilation also, Assamese has an O sound instead of uh, O representing Middle Indo-Aryan O. Assamese kohor, Bengali shosur, husband's father, compare Hindi sasur.
प्राकृत ससुरा एंड संस्कृत स्वशुरा आसामीज एंड बंगाली आर सेट ऑफ फ्रॉम ओडिया इन सम फ्यूचर्स इन द फॉर्मर टू मिडिल इंडो आरियन डा एंड ढ मर्ज मीडियले टू डा rather r r r with a subsequent development to r in assamese for instance the dari bengali dari assamese dari beer hindi gujarati darhi prakrit dhadiya assamese is also distinguished from bengali by several developments among them the merger of assamese retroflex sound with dental sounds as already stated above assamese ut tamil but bengali ut odia oto sindhi utu extra assamese also has sir for earlier ch and ch sounds and a z sound for j and j for example assamese kas glass bengali kach असामीज अजी टुडे वडिया अजी बंगाली हिंदी आज इन एडिशन असामीज रिप्लेस एन स साउंड इनिशियली बाय ख एंड बिटवीन वोवेल्स बाय हा खो इज अ गुड एग्जांपल फॉर बोथ पर्टिकुलर साउंड चेंजेस आल्सो कैरेक्टराइज लैंग्वेजेस ऑफ द नॉर्थ वेस्ट इन दिस ग्रुप an older voiceless stop for example the became voice there is the after a nasal sound in other areas the voiceless stop is retained kashmiri dand punjabi dand sindhi dandu tooth the d is an imploded stop here that should be taken care of but assamese and bengali hindi gujarati marathi dat similes data and sanskrit danta moreover in the northwest group a y stop for example the preceded by a nasal was assimilated to the latter resulting in two nasals which were subsequently reduced to one in some areas in the rest of new indo aryan the vowel preceding nasal was nasalized thus kashmiri dun means churning stick sindhi danu tribute punjabi dan lahanda dan force can contrast with assamese dar that means pole bengali dar or hindi dar dad oppression fine and others all forms derive from old indo aryan danda dand stick staff club royal power fine even means punishment in the sequence of a short vowel followed by the consonants pahadi differs from the rest of the northwest group and agrees with the rest of new indo aryan in the northwest the sequence either remain unchanged or the cluster was simplified without lengthening of the word or other languages generally simplified the cluster and lengthened the vowel punjabi bhat sindhi bhatu lahanda bhat kashmiri bati uh, but nepali kumoni assami etc it is bhat dardik languages occupies a special position the sibilant sounds did not all merge here for example kashmiri a dardic language has sura sura with uh, sh shula rather than s as in most other indo aryan languages and sat with seven with s also voiced aspirated stops merged with unaspirated stops in dardic kashmiri gur hars but hindi ghoda kashmiri dud in hindi dud 
One major feature distinguishing Sindhi from the rest of the Northwest group is the development of series of imploded stops like ba, da, etc. Implosive stops also occur in the Sindhi vicinity like in Kachi and uh, Lahanda. Another feature that distinguishes Sindhi from other Northwest languages including Kachi is the retention of the Middle Indo-Aryan final short vowels Sindhi a key I but Hindi Ak Middle Indo-Aryan a key. Punjabi is distinguished from other members of the Northwest group by its tonal system having low and mid and high tones. Initial voice aspirated stops of earlier Indo-Aryan appear in Punjabi as voiceless stops with low tone on the following vowel Punjabi Koda, Hindi, Hindi Ghoda, Punjabi Toy two and half but Hindi Dhai. Non-initially a voice aspirate became unaspirated and the preceding vowel received high tone, thus Punjabi Dood, but Hindi Dood, and Punjabi Lab, but uh, Hindi Lab. Gujarati, Marathi, Konkani in the West and uh, Northwest differ from the languages of the Midlands in that, as in the East, there is no contrast between long and short E and U vowels. Then, Gujarati has certain features that in turn set it apart from the other languages of the group. In addition to A and O sounds, it has the open vowels A and O, Chothu, fourth in, in Middle Indo Orient, Chautha, Besu, Baisai in Middle Indo Orient to sit. Moreover, Gujarati has murmured vowels generally developed from vowels followed by her. Kehche says her represents murmuring of the vowel. Old Gujarati Kahai Chai. Marathi and Konkani have two series of affricate sounds, Ch and Ch. There was clearly mutual influence of Indo Aryan languages at an earlier time together with movement of groups of speakers. Thus, while Punjabi such is, a, is the expected form comparable to Middle Indo-Aryan Satya in Old Indo-Aryan Satya, Hindi such true does not represent the expected outcome. The item such must come from the Punjabi area. It's interesting to note that each uh, modern Indo-Aryan language like uh, Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati, Sindhi, Punjabi, Bengali, Assami, even Simhalese spoken in Sri Lanka, all have come under local influences have undergone some changes. The development of uh, unaspirated aspirated contrast of nasals and laterals is one such and because this kind of situation was not found in the either in the middle Indo-Aryan or in the old Indo-Aryan. So these are local phenomena and there are many developments like uh, for instance uh, uh, Punjabi has developed uh, tones at the cost of uh, aspiration but it's a partial one. Similarly, Sindhi has developed, uh, particularly in phonology, implosives, uh, which was not found elsewhere. Similarly, Gujarati has developed uh, murmur vowels, uh, again, uh, which were not found in the uh, earlier stage. And the, the same trend continues even in grammar. Like Middle Indo-Aryan, New Indo-Aryan distinguishes only two numbers, singular and plural. Unlike Middle Indo-Aryan, the New Indo-Aryan languages differ in the degree to which gender distinctions are made. Three genders are retained in the West and Southwest, that is Gujarati, Marathi, Konkani, and also in Simhalese. Unlike Gujarati, Konkani, 
and Marathi, in which every noun, whether it denotes an animate being or not, has a particular gender that is unpredictable, similarly restricts masculine and feminine gender to animate and neuter to inanimate. The Eastern group has no grammatical gender distinctions at all and two genders are distinguished elsewhere. Over a large area of New Indo-Aryan, the noun has only two cases, direct and oblique. A lack, lack of distinction between direct and oblique cases in the plural is typical of several languages including forums in Hindi, Gujarati, Marathi and Bhojpuri. Direct forums are used independently, oblique forums before postpositions and other affixes. The combination of stem and postposition serves the function of inflected case forms of earlier Indo-Aryan. Thus, to denote an object, direct or indirect, Hindi uses the postposition ko, which occurs in direct object constructions normally only with nouns denoting animate being, for example, ladke ko dekta ladke ko dekta hai, he sees the boy, ladke ko mithai do, give a sweet to the boy. Other postpositions are me, per, se, etc. A large group of postpositions are linked to the noun with the affix ko, ladke ke saath, with the boy, ladke ke pass near the boy, etc. Many such postpositions represent old nominal forms. Other new Indo-Aryan languages have systems similar to that of Hindi, though the forms of the postpositions differ. Though the nominal system of Punjabi is very close to that of Hindi, it has separate ablative and locative forms in the singular and plural respectively. While some languages have a fuller case system than that notice above, for example, Bengali has both genitive singular and plural endings and a locative case. Similarly, Kashmiri has nominative, agentive, dative and objective cases. Not all such uh, case forms are inherited from Middle Indo-Aryan. In addition to case endings, these languages also use postpositions and having postpositions is a feature of uh, uh, most of the Indian languages. Adjectives behave generally in the same way as nouns but have a syntactic restriction. In Hindi, the possessive is in the oblique form as in the noun after which it occurs but in the plural only the noun has the oblique form. Further, the formation of comparatives and superlatives with derivative affixes has been eliminated. To a Sanskrit sentence such as Ime Amubhyaha Adhyataraha, these people are richer than those, in which the comparative Adhyatara occurs construed with the ablative form, corresponds a Hindi sentence Ye Unse Amirhe, in which no comparative affix is used, literally these are rich from those. Comparable constructions with a postposition meaning from occurs elsewhere in New Indo-Aryan. The pronominal system of New Indo-Aryan formally resembles the Middle Indo-Aryan stage more than its noun system. For example, Gujarati whom I may I agent to, I may we also agent to are directly comparable to Apabhramsha, how, my, amhai. The number distinctions of the Middle Indo-Aryan pronouns have been replaced, however, by distinctions of familiarity and politeness. For example, Hindi and Bengali have a three-way distinction. Hindi, Aap, Bengali, Apni, You are polite or honorific forms. Hindi, Tum, Bengali, Tumi are informal forms and Hindi tu, Bengali tui are used only for inferiors and small children. 
Hindi and Bengali differ, however, in the plural forms of these. In Gujarati, on the other hand, tu is a very familiar pronoun, whereas tame is used generally covering the proximate domains of Hindi op and tum. Op, if used, strikes the hearer as fawning. Marathi has a similar system. Southwestern languages also make a distinction in the first person plural between inclusive and exclusive. The exclusive ex excluding the person spoken to. In the form of the relative pronoun and the third person pronoun, languages differ in the degree to which gender distinctions are made, thus contrasting with Old and Middle Indo-Aryan in which these forums had three genders. For example, Marathi has masculine, feminine and neuter for the relative pronoun, while Bengali has animate and inanimate. New Indo-Aryan languages differ in the degree to which finite verb forms have been replaced by nominal forms. In Bengali, a contrast is made between continuous or actual present and non-continuous or habitual present. For example, Ami Kaj Kori, I work, literally I do work, with the ending E contrasts with Ami Kaj Korchi, I am working, in which Cha intervenes between the root and the ending. Hindi has a similar contrast but uses nominal forms. For example, Main Kaam Karta Hoon, I work, Main Kaam Kar Raha Hoon, I am working. Both contain the finite form whom of the auxiliary, but kar, karto, and kar, kar, raho are nominal forms, the latter the past of rah to stay. Gujarati has both the types, the present tense using finite verb forms, the imperfect employing nominal forms. So both are possible. Even in areas in which finite forms are not used in the present, they occur in the imperative forms and what may be called the subjunctive. For example, Hindi, tum kaam karo, work, you do the work, may andar aau, may I come in. So the person number system of the new indo audience verb occurs with the use of pronouns. For example, the forums jao, Karo in Gujarati, Tame Kya Javo Cho, where are you going? And Sung Karo Cho, what are you doing? Or historically, plurals, but are used with reference to one person addressed by the pronoun Tame. Similarly, in Hindi, in which a person distinction is not made in the plural, of Kaha ja rahe hai, aap kya kar rahe hai, equivalent in meaning to the Gujarati sentence have the plural form rahe. No number or person distinction is made in Bengali word forms ami, amra, khori, I do or we do is same. In the third person, a distinction is made between ordinary and honorific, she, ordinary, tini karan, Plural, Ktara, Tara, Koran. Other languages like Hindi also have honorific forms for which the plural is used. The new Indo Aryan languages retain the passive and causative forms. The causative is conservative in retaining both the affixes that appear in Middle Indo Aryan and the vowel alternation. The passive is also formed by suffixation and in some cases. Coming to vocabulary, the two most important sources of non-Indo-Aryan vocabulary in New Indo-Aryan are Persian, including Arabic items introduced through Persian, the court language of the Mughals, and English. The Perso-Arabic vocabulary permeates every aspect of new Indo-Aryan vocabulary, especially in the midlands, that is UP through the Punjab. There are of course 
Hindi Urdu words proper to Islam, Hindi, for instance, Quran, Eid, Namaz, Masjid, as well as the words word for religion, Mazhab. Even in the other areas, we see lots of words from Perso-Arabic sources entering into uh, New Indo-Aryan, like Rumal, Mej, Kursi, uh, Talwar, etc. We can uh, easily identify them. Uh, in fact, the various words connected with administration uh, have entered Kacheri, Atara Kacheri for that matter, uh, is one, and uh, we can think of many others. When we look at the writing systems, there are two main scripts employed, in fact, uh, which can go to World Indo Aryan stage itself. One is the uh, Kharosti script, and the other is the Brahmi script. In fact, these were employed in the Ashokan inscriptions. In fact, that is the first evidence of uh, writing system being employed. The Kharosti script, Kharosti means donkey's lips, is used only in the Northwest, is supposed to be of Aramaic origin and, and is written from right to left. Whereas Brahmi, supposed to be of North Semitic origin, is written from left to right and appears earliest on Ashokan inscriptions in uh, other areas than the Northwest. And all the present Indian scripts can be traced to Brahmi script. To summarize then, modern Indo-Aryan languages spanning from around 1000 AD to the present, even in this particular period, we can periodize like old modern Indo-Aryan, middle Indo-Aryan and new Indo-Aryan. For instance, Ganeshwari of Marathi it can, can be considered to be old Indo-Aryan, uh, old modern Indo-Aryan. And uh, the works of uh, 15th, 16th, 17th century could be considered belong to the middle period and the works of 17, 18th century onwards can be considered to be of modern period. So uh, in all these three periods, we see linguistic developments, however, they become more specific to the languages concerned. So it's a vast area and uh, further studies can be made in this area using the references and uh, there's a vast literature available in the internet also that also can be used for studying purpose. Your own languages can be taken and compared with the earlier stages, particularly those speaking the new modern Indo-Aryan languages, it would be very helpful in understanding the subject matter. Thank you.